How's it, how's it guys? So to get started with street photography, obviously you need, uh, well you need a camera. <laughs> you know, it could be anything from a smartphone or what have you. And then you need, well, you need an eye for photographs. It's not just enough to just take pictures of random things. You want to see the world as a photographer sees it. You want to approach them with, with a sense of curiosity of people go, whoa, what's this? What's this thing here, you know, that, that is different to everything else? That we look at somebody like Henry Cotter Bresson and we think, oh, you know, it's, it's, he just went out and was lucky all the time, you know, but it's not because what he actually had was patience. But it's not enough when that picture is right to just photograph the moment. You need to have it creatively taken. Alex Webb is a great example of this. And he's also a very good example of the last thing you need as a street photographer, which is this understanding that persistence is, is so important. You know, he talks, Alex Webb talks about his street photography that 99% of the photographs that he takes are where well, he considers them to be failures. So we're going to take a leaf from Joel Meyerwitz's vast knowledge. And Joel Meyerwitz is a very famous photographer whose work is going to show up all through this video. And he his was asked about, you know, what is the best lens for street photography? And he said, you know, the best lens is one that fits your personality. And I think we can apply this to cameras as well. You know, for me, I, I like to take pictures with my smartphone. But for you, you may want to have, you know, a point and shoot, you know, less in your face or look. Or you might go the whole hog and be very Bruce Gilden and stuff and in people's face. What makes you a better photographer is having a camera that fits you, your personality, and that you can use without thinking about it. And that brings us on to, you know, your eye, your photographic eye. How do you train yourself to see the world as a photographer? Time. when you're driving around when you're on your commute when you are doing like whatever it is that you do right look at the world as a photographer look for compositions look for moments look for things that are happening all around you don't just be zoned out in your own little world with your headphones on think about things the more that you think about things in a photographic way then the more in tune you're going to be with what's going on around you that that you start to see options for photographs everywhere. And when you start you doing this, it means that you can react quicker when moments happen, are playing out in front of you. Street photography is very much a, an in the moment, reactionary kind of genre in photography. So the more that you can rely on muscle memory, on just instinct, then the better your photographs are gonna be. Another great way of sort of you know, growing instinct is to have a sense of curiosity. Your Robert Kappa talked about, if your photographs are not good enough, then you're not close enough. I think you may have heard that before. And a lot of people, I feel, misinterpret that to mean that you need to be physically close. You know, probably because Robert Kappa was a, you know, a war photographer. But I don't think it's a choice. I think what it is, he's talking about being, emotionally invested in in the photograph you know of being curious and interested in the thing that you are taking pictures of and i suppose one way that you could employ this in your own photography especially as a beginner street photographer is to go to places that interest you already you know if you find that you are interested in shopping malls <laughs> for example then go and photograph at shopping malls if you find that you know you find chinatowns or something you know thrilling then go to a chinatown but don't go somewhere simply because you've been told that it's like a good place to go and shoot. Go and shoot places and things that interest you, that you have a curiosity 
bound. You get this from that kind of power observation. The two sort of go in hand in hand. You know, if you find someone, and again, we're going to come back to, to Joel Meyerowitz. You know, he talks about going to somewhere and standing and just waiting. You're letting the world ebb and flow around you until, you know, you are becoming in tune with what's going on. I've always felt that a really successful street photographer will find a situation where a great photograph could happen. Matt Stewart is a wonderfully humorous photographer, right? His little moments all set up. But so many of them, you can see that he's seen the basis of a photograph that is like, that could be kind of cool, right? But he's had the patience to wait for something to come along, for that timing to happen, to create a picture that you kind of go, wow, that's so good, that's, wow, that's amazing. There are so many varied ways of approaching street photography. It's too many to mention. But if you go and you look at people and their body of work and you take ideas from that, that it gives you a kickstart of, of, of things to explore, you can think about you know, compositions and you know, leading lines and all that sort of thing. But they will only take you so far. Sometimes you need signposts to say, hey, look, there's this thing over here. Go and check it out. But go and find photographers whose work excites you. You know, there are many books. Street photography is an exceptionally, you know, popular genre. You know, people like Diane Arbus, you know, Lee Friedlander. You know, all these people had different approaches. And you can pick and choose like a magpie about the things that you want to photograph. Find people whose work you think that's awesome and take inspiration from it. Put it together in your own little creative stew. <laughs> Just make great pictures. When you look through the stories of photographers, you know, like, like uh, oh, Vivian Meyer. You know, so Vivian Meyer, right? You find these containers and inside there there's like a hundred thousand negatives and so how many times have we heard in photography of people being discovered who have left huge archives of images right and that tells you right bearing in mind this is usually film right that they took a lot of photographs right that some days it just didn't happen for them right they probably felt frustrated they go oh just not feeling and nothing happened today. But they persevered, they pushed on, they kept on going. Don't just go and take a couple of weekends and think, do you know what? I've, you know, I've taken some pictures and uh, it's, it's not really kind of panning up. I haven't done anything good. I must be not very good at this, right? The greats in history and the, the, the people who are working now who are, who are very good as well, it didn't just happen overnight. Photography is an ongoing process. It is a growth process that happens continuously. That Alex Webb quote, you know, 99 pictures are failures. Same thing happened with, uh, you know, Ansel Adams. He was talking about, you know, if he gets one or two good pictures in a month, he considered that to be a good result. Don't buy into this idea that is purported and you know, sold by social media that everybody goes out and creates awesome images, bang, 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 like a boss, because they don't, 
right? You're just seeing the amalgamated results of everybody's hard work presented as, oh, this just all happens all the time, right? Street photography is hit, miss, can chance, it can be all sorts of things. It's a wonderful way of connecting with the world. If you remember to, you know, have a camera that is one that works for you. Do you remember that, that, you know, having a camera isn't just enough, you need a bit of a good eye, that you want to have that sense of curiosity, the patience, the sense of timing, you know, to, to take that picture creatively as well, you know, and that it's not always going to work out. When you put all those things together, street photography becomes a lot more of an enjoyable process, a lot easier to, to kind of get into and stuff. And and I haven't mentioned half of the wonderful street photographers, but a guy whose work I know you will absolutely adore is William Klein. And I put his video up here. He is the godfather of street photography, certainly modern street photography. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will see you again soon.